everybody. Wow, we have done it. We're here. It's time. Late Night with Los now arrives. A founder of Juggernaut, a incredible content creator, and one of the top streamers of Apex Legends. Female streamers, that's fine. She's still really good. Introducing Zebra. How are you? How's your night going? It's gotten a whole lot better. I can tell you that right now. Wow, you made I it. I love that. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Late Night with Los Absolutely. Studios. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have a good? You have a good day today. You have. Uh, I heard you had a couple of cocktails previously. How are you feeling I right did. now? I did. I had to pregame for the Late Night Los. Okay. Zebra. Well, yeah. you you missed an incredible seltzer jug by me. I I would like oh, to say. Oh, see another one. It was another another one. You're absolutely mad if you think I'm going to do something like that. It was one of the greatest sufferings I've done on my own stream. What what seltzer though? Uh, it was it was a uh, it was a non-alcoholic polar seltzer. I then crushed it with my my raw grip and strength for the entertainment oh. of millions. You are yeah strong los. <laughs> That's strong guy. That's what people say. That's what people say. Now, Zebra, thank you so much for joining us here in the Late Night with Low Studios. And what we always ask our guests when they come along is, how did you get your content creator name? I don't know. I started off... What? No, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. I started off as Zebra Cakes back in 2020. Um, I kind of just started gaming for fun during the pandemic, and I was called Zebra Cakes, like the Little Debbie snack, Zebra Cakes. And then um, I was just doing it for fun, really. And yeah, like everything kind of took off and did really well, and everyone was just calling me Zebra. So when I hit partner, I just decided to switch my name to Zebra. So when when you, first, first of all, I wanna do a big shout out to my benefactor, my girlfriend who just paid me money with with subs, a big shout out to Kirsten. Thank you so much for uh, for supporting me. Wow, and also Rhodes, non-alcoholic seltzer. Hell not, bro. What do you what do you think? I'm on the job right now, son. What do you think I'm gonna do? B give up a poor performance? But thank you so much. But also, when you become partner, does that mean you get to just kick off other people who have zebra? How does that work? Yeah, there was actually um nobody had the name Zebra, so I think I got lucky. Well, I think there was one account, but like if they're not active within a certain amount of time, um I think that the you can kick them off, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I don't think I don't think I'll ever get Los. Yeah, I I I struggle with an identity crisis, Z. There's a man named Los Pollos <laughs> TV who is is first and foremost known as the official Los and it, it pains me, so it pains oh. me so dearly. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would, what would your name be if, you know, you could change your name? What would you change it to? Just host Los? No, I would probably just become Los. I feel like Los just is kind of just yeah. what uh, what I I personally see myself as. I, you know, you know, it's fine. I'm not super upset about it. Just like well, a yeah. small amount. <laughs> yeah. And but if Los is already taken, I think host Los wouldn't really be too horrible, right? It's it's not who I am, Z. I'm a man, you know. I got I gotta be me. Host Los. No, Let's that's it. <laughs> Can I um? I'm totally going to announce you on Twitter again to remind people. Is that cool? Well, uh, yes. What? Why? Why would I? To. You don't need to ask for my permission well, to promote I'm me. Like, I'm gonna do that right now. So if you see me typing, that's why. Okay. Rhodes, all right. Oh, well, we'll take it into consideration. But I like, you know, it, it takes away the fact that I've I've worked on my my skincare routine quite extensively. Uh, so we you you can't discount the the handsome part, right? Z, what's your skincare routine? True. What's what's that looking like you right know, now? Um, I, my skincare routine is actually horrible. Um, but don't tell me it's just I, water. I, I will. I will. No, no, I use Cerave, but um, like I'll do like a makeup wipe and then CeraVe usually, and then some moisturizer. But I have all kinds of stuff. Like I've got vitamin C to put on my face and like different types of moisturizers. But honestly, the pretty easy and like lazy route would be um, CeraVe, just CeraVe. Hey, hey, it's 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 respectable. It's understandable. You know, uh, fellow member and founder of Juggernaut, 
Lord Enzo actually has a very painful tale about uh, about that product. We'll okay. we'll discuss it at, at a later time. It's it's a woman who broke his heart. He gave a full bottle of that to a woman who broke his heart, and she took it from. She him? took it from a. She took it. It was it was a friendly gesture to let borrow, but no, she stole that thing right away. That heartless wretch. Regardless, Z. Yes. You are such a a exciting and entertaining content creator, but how did you begin your journey into creation? Um, so I got into this honestly because of the pandemic. Uh, I was a cheerleader my whole life. Uh, I coached cheerleading. Uh, my stepmom owned a cheer gym. Like I was just constantly in the cheer gym. And then um, I was in college and cheering. Uh, off scholarship in college when 2020 COVID hit and we were all stuck in our house and my ex at the time actually is the one who kind of got me into streaming because we were just bored in the house. He was trying to learn Twitch and um, I was watching him learn Twitch and I was like, I can do that. And so, yeah, that's pretty much how I just kind of, uh, I just kind of like watched him learn OBS, I picked up on it. And then he got really mad when my success was bigger than his, and then he broke up. Well, we kind of broke up mutually, but uh, was it because you were better? It was a big than argument. Him? Was that was that the reason? No, I don't know. He was way better. He his <laughs> his argument was because uh, like this was a legit. This was a huge fight we had. Uh, we got into it because um, <laughs> he was upset that I came into it blind with no knowledge, didn't know anything about PCs didn't know anything about Apex, and he taught me all about Apex and all of those things. And he was also trying to stream at the time, but he, the difference we had is I had the marketing knowledge and I was trying to teach him the marketing and he didn't, he wouldn't do it. So like his didn't take off as well and it honestly caused an argument. So yeah. <laughs> how, do, how does that argument go? How does that start? Is it kind of just like, you know, I started, I started he, streaming first. Like, like, you would think that a boyfriend would be jealous over, like, you know, just attention on the internet as a, whim as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it was just simply the fact that he was mad that I came into it blind and just started doing well pretty quickly. And I just would post on social media all the time. And I was always making TikToks and um like always making funny apex memes and like i stuck with the whole apex route and um yeah i don't really know how it came about he just uh like yeah he was just like genuinely upset like to the point where he got his dad involved in our argument oh what? <laughs> wait what I mean, no it was a whole thing no like it was a whole thing like <laughs> what, was, what was the dad's involvement what, what was he saying you know he was just sarah to, like, you should it. probably let your boyfriend do better on twitch i don't know <laughs> No, he was just trying to get his dad's advice and, uh, uh, like, you know, his dad was like, I don't know, it was really stupid in my opinion, but, um, yeah, like, his dad got involved in the whole argument and just was like, I don't even remember what he said, but was just trying to, like, coach Ben through it, basically, of, like, look, like, just because it didn't work out for you, like, maybe this isn't your... Maybe this isn't the direction of life that you're supposed to be going, kind of a thing. And uh, his dad was really awesome, but is he, like, yeah, it, like it was such a. My point in saying that is that it was such a serious argument that he legitimately. We, I actually moved out for like a couple of uh, days back into my, or like a about a week or two, because he was on like a hissy fit and I was not about it. So I moved out for two weeks, and then he told me that he talked to his dad and everything was better, and yeah, it was a whole thing. Well, uh, I'm glad everything worked out. I guess does uh, actually no. no don't, wait, don't. We're broken up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, but you're doing good, I think, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, like it's no, it's no hate. It's no, it's no hate. You know, like that's an ex that I will always respect, and I think vice versa. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, I would not be where I'm at right now if it weren't for him. And like he at the time gave me his PC because he wanted to build a new one and he legit just like gave his PC to me. He was very nice and it was a sweetheart. Uh, yeah, like he just gave me his PC. I didn't even know anything about PCs. Like but that. then then you deleted the Ben folder. <laughs> I didn't delete. 
It's still in there. It creeped up the other day, Lowe's. <laughs> so for the, the folks at home, Zebra brought her PC over to Juggernaut HQ and wanted to get things set up, but then saw a folder with the name of her ex. And then what happened? Um, I like... <laughs> I saw his name as on a folder and I deleted it, but apparently that folder, I saw Ben's folder, which is my ex's name, who gave me the PC. So it was his, it was his. So I was like, oh, like we don't need this. And I like right click, delete, delete everything. And um, it literally wiped my PC because that had all the program files and like everything, like it was the backbone of my PC, basically that one file that I deleted somehow. So yeah, um, I basically spent an entire weekend in uh, Houston, just kind of rebuilding it back up to be my PC at that point. <laughs> it like deleted all kinds of stuff. Like my... Everything was wiped, including even my games were wiped, which that's weird to me. I still don't understand it, how that happened, but everything just got completely wiped. It was crazy. Well, I mean, it all worked out. You ended up getting them back, probably, hopefully. So you started off streaming in college because it's your, but you actually went to two colleges. Is that right? Did you know that? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just heard it, heard, it, heard it before. I don't, I don't know. Who knows what's going on? Yes, yes, yes. I um, I went to two colleges. So the first one I went to, I was on, oh, well, both of them, I was on a cheer scholarship for both. The first one was a bigger cheer scholarship, but a smaller school. Um, I did two and a half years there. And um, then I transferred to a bigger college uh, with a better cheer team and for less money. And honestly, out of the two, my favorite time in college was the first one, the smaller school. I think I'm a small town gal. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. So why, why did you why did you like it better? What, what was college zebra like? I know I know what second uh, school. I know what, oh. what this what this this zebra was like. I, honestly, I want to oh. say in, in in the second in the photo on the right. You look very happy, but you also look like you are you are willing to, like you are you are ready to slap a bitch. That's kind of what that that face tells me. I cannot believe you pulled this fucking. I hate this picture. I cannot believe you found these pictures. I hate you. <laughs> what's, what's wrong okay. with these pictures? Okay, okay, a lot. So the one on the right, yeah, I was ready to slap a bitch. So the one on the right. It was raining this day. It was so humid. And I had spent so much time curling my hair for the rain. And we had to walk forever through the rain. And it just, like, ruined my hair. It was horrible. Whatever. So that's why I look psychotic on the right. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the left, I think, might have been my second year, maybe. I don't know. You probably know more that's, about it than yes, I do. No, that's the later year. <laughs> so um that one actually we got started with the um we got we had a whole season of just like hardcore training um many many hours a day let's see COVID happened march right we had nationals which basically we trained for nationals for like an entire year okay I had worked my butt off. That was probably the hardest I've ever, like the most effort I've ever put into cheerleading ever. Um, and then two weeks before nationals is when COVID hit. And so I did not get to finish out the cheer year on the left. That was 2020 then. So that means the right was 2019, left was 2020. Yeah, that was the second. The, the These two pictures are from the second school I went to. Yeah, so... Kennesaw State has a pretty solid esports uh, yeah. group. Have you ever had like ran in or hung out with any of the esports people? No, because I did not know about esports until after the fact. Uh, like when COVID hit, I genuinely didn't even know esports was like as big as it is. I didn't even know we had an esports team. Actually, I don't think I don't know about this fact, but uh, I'm not sure if we had our esports team before 2020. Can we put that picture down, maybe? Oh, 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 oh that was... <laughs> <laughs> Can we maybe not have that up? 
you know, something I, I like to do here on uh, on late night is pull up embarrassing pictures of people and just that one and was leave. super embarrassing. <laughs> so I, actually, that kind of reminds me. So when I got my first uh, my senior portrait when I was graduating, and it's the one that's in my mom's house right now. Uh, me yeah. and my friends, we all took edibles the that night before. But we didn't really know how much each was. So it was like a chocolate broken up into four 40 milligram things. So we all had one. And okay. for someone who doesn't take edibles, you should be taking uh, a, a quarter of that. 10 milligrams is the recommended dose. We took 40 each. So and you and your who? Who are you with? Me and my friends. Uh, two of my friends and my ex. Uh, we oh, we like dropped those. So... Uh, <laughs> yeah, drop the X. Yeah. Okay, so that sounds like a fun time. So how did you feel off of that much? Oh, I felt terrible. Animals? I felt terrible. I thought I was going to die. Like, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't, um, you know, that I was going to die from anything specific. It was just like, this is it. I've made yeah. it this far, and I well, I guess that is just as far as we're going to get. My roommate, uh, Prison Alex was his name, because he looks like he went to prison, in case you were wondering. Uh, he was just laying in his bed, just saying never again over and over. And I was like, bro, shut up. Shut up. I know, <laughs> I know you're going through a real crisis right now, but think about me for a moment, please. Damn. That's crazy. <laughs> I've, uh, I've only ever taken edibles once. It was with my godparents, actually. And, um, I don't think it was that. It definitely was not as much as you took, for sure. Uh, I'm not, like, big into that kind of stuff, though. To be honest. No? Why? Why not? Well, my first time I ever got high, I was at a lake. And uh, that one was fine and fun. But I, like, sat in a hammock and uh, ate an entire loaf of bread. And this was, like, in high school, to be honest. And um, then after that, a night after prom... Am I allowed to talk about this stuff? Like, Absolutely. Is this, um, that's that's what we're this here This isn't for. illegal, right? We're talking right. about the real the real things. Okay. We're raw okay. here on Late Night with Los. Okay, great. Okay, so then after that, it was like a night after prom. Uh, it was an after party, and I tried smoking again, and they, like, took a grav. It was my first time ever hitting a grav. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> the Well, what made it worse is the guy that was doing it, his name was Alex. His name was Alex. I'm not going to dox him. Yeah, I, I, I was about to say, <laughs> don't say that. that. I'm not going to dox him, but his name was Alex, okay? Mm. And Alex was, like, the stoner of the of the school, like, whatever. Like, he was, like, the cool guy in the stoner, so I was like, oh, I'm going to impress him. So I I've never heard of a grav, never knew anything about a grav. I thought it was just, like, regular smoking. So I inhaled this giant grav, and I held it, and he was like, all right. And I kept holding it, and he was like, all right, let it out. And I was like, no. And I just, like, held it. And he was like, no, no, like, let it out. And I was like, no. And I probably held my grab in for, like, a solid 30 seconds. That, and that's absurd. I'm not joking. It was probably actually a little bit longer. I just, like, held it in my chest. I exhaled it out. I will never, ever, ever forget this feeling I had. I, we were on the back porch at this prom after party. I stood up. I walked inside and I was just so confused, like so confused. There was a hallway there, but like, I didn't know there were so many rooms. Things were spinning. I was hearing noises. I was hallucinating. I was actually hallucinating. I was like hearing sound effects in my head. My heart started going like just insane beating. I thought I was dying. And then that was the day I had my first panic attack ever. So, um, then after that, um, I, every time I would smoke, I would just like get nervous that I was going to feel that way again. And I think I would just work myself up and basically have a panic attack every time I smoked after that. And, um, I just haven't really since then, literally since high school. <laughs> yeah. For 30 that, that seconds holding a grav ever. bong, that is, that is one incredibly, uh, just say no to drugs. Shout out, big shout out to my mom. Thank you, mom, for that. At all. We, yeah. we don't we don't do any of that business here on late night with us. We just talk about it. That's <laughs> but the yeah. fact that you held a grav bong for 30 seconds 
that is like incredibly admirable. So I I I may have may have done that once or twice, only only once. Um, it <laughs> it had absolutely destroyed me. Uh, and horrible. I ended up in a chair like this, like a mouth wide open, like I got killed by the bitch from the ring. Oh like, my gosh! Wait. Oh wait, I, I think you're delayed because I was looking at your stream. I, should I look in Discord so it's not? As yeah, yeah, as Discord. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. That's so funny. Do you want me to? Do you want me to do the yeah. thing again? Okay. I, absolutely. I, I did see it, but I want to see you do it again. Yeah. Absolutely destroyed, like I got killed by the bitch for the ring. <laughs> that was from your grav. That was from that was from a grav. So that was that was honestly a, a mess of a night because we were me. I was with my brother. We were going to one of his friends' place. It was in a gated community. We didn't have the code. So somebody opened, like somebody went ahead of us, and we thought it was our other friend who was meeting us there. So we followed them, and then just kind of like had the brights on, and like honk, 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 honk. And then they <laughs> stop and get out of the car, and it turns out it's these two young women, and we're like, oh my god, they probably thought we were gonna kill them. So we just like zoomed off. That's crazy. Yeah, it was a uh, that was that was a bit of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll say no to drugs, definitely. I like alcohol, but um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know about weed ever again. I'm not sure. Because then after that, I tried smoking a, a grab out of a half of a milk carton, mm -hmm. a gallon of milk. Tried one of those. Same thing happened. I just freaked out. My um, sister went to go grab a piece of hair off my shoulder, and when she touched me, I heard, like, the sound effect of, like, boing, like that sound effect. <laughs> Boing sound, yeah. So I don't know. It's just uh, I'm I'm a really hyper person. I like to socialize, and I think that drinking is just alcohol is just uh, my way. If I want to have a good time at a party. So what is what is zebra like at a party? What was zebra like in in college? Were you much of a were you a big time partier? Oh oh okay yeah so yeah that was your question. Yes, big partier. Uh, I I remember constantly shotgunning four locos. Like, that was normal. Four Locos were the shit in college. Four Locos were so good. Um, now, no. No, no, no. But the amount of nights that I would actually just puke off Four Locos. Oh, yeah, I was pretty crazy. Um, were were you I, a lightweight? Like, Did you, do you puke a lot? Um, I'm, I think I'm more of a lightweight now because I don't drink as much. But in college, we were drinking, like, almost every night, just partying. We partied all the time. The first two years, my because I, I, I was in college for five years, uh, my freshman year and my sophomore year. Yes, 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 yes. I partied a lot. The last three is when I transferred to a different school. I got into a serious relationship. I kind of grew up. I became a cheer coach, not just a cheerleader. So I dropped the party, the party phase the last three years of college. But my freshman year and my sophomore year of college were nuts and like, it was just because, like, also my friends were the same way. Like, uh, we were all party, like, party animals, basically. And, like, we would go, we would dance on the table, we would dance on the bar. Like, we did not have any awareness. We were honestly so annoying. Like, if I were to look at myself, me now, if I were to go out with my freshman college self, I would be so annoyed. I, yeah. I've danced on tables before. I, I don't think they would let me dance on a bar. I feel like... Uh, girls could definitely get away with dancing on the bar. I I could only go as far as the table. If I got on the bar, someone would like choke slam me down from there. They're like, you're not you're not hot enough for this, and then I would just get kicked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's different when you're a girl. Yeah, I guess it is a little bit different. Um, I did go to jail in college. I had a uh, arrest an arrest phase. I um yeah went to jail. H how? Got it all what? Dropped. What? I was there. I was there overnight. I had two cellmates who were on their way to prison and they literally had prison names. One was, these were their names. I didn't give them to them. These were actually their names that they told me. One's name was Chink and the other's name was Seashell. And those were my jail mates that I had when I went to jail in college. All of that got dropped, but I went because I was just like an underage college girl at a bar. It was really, really stupid. And the guy didn't even have to arrest me, but he told me he wanted me to know what it would be like to go to jail. So went to jail. Um, I had to like eat there, stay the night. It was basically like being on an episode of Beyond Scared Straight. What was it like? Were, were you scared? How did you feel during all no. that? No, I was, I was honestly, thank God I was drunk. 
thank God I was drunk because, um, like when they first arrested me, yes, I like I was so like I was honest with them too. When they when they pulled me to the side, I was honest. I said, no, sir, I'm not of age. I'm not supposed to be here. I showed them my fake ID. I gave them my fake ID. I was like, I have a ride home. Who's sober? Like, can I just leave? Whatever, whatever. Um, well. Then they like put me in handcuffs and put me in the back of the cop car. And then that's when I started crying. And that's when I got scared. Then I was like, I, I, they told me that they could charge me with a felony for having a fake ID, blah, 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 blah. Then, um, so I was, I was sitting in the back of this cop car. The cop comes around and was like, all right, well, we could charge you, but we're not going to. However, we could let you off on a, a citation, but... We want you to know what it's like so that you never end up in this situation again. So, you know, at that point I knew, okay, this is just bullshit. Why, why, why am I here? I don't know. Cause they said that they would let me off on a citation. They just didn't want to. So at that point I was like, okay, I felt better. They, they said they weren't going to charge me with anything. They just wanted me to go through the jail process. So I was like, oh, okay. So then I was like cracking jokes. To the lady, the lady who drove me to the jail was a different than the guy who actually arrested me. And I like asked her, I was like, so whenever I apply for a job, like, do I have to check that I'm a criminal now? Like, like do I have to put that I'm a criminal? She's like, lady, uh, I'm just a driver. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, she was pretty funny. Um, I asked her, I was like, okay. Or when we got to the jail, I told her that she was the best Uber driver I've ever had and that I was going to give her five stars on Uber. Um, and then we get inside the jail and then like the the male inmates are like all on the right on like in like a glass cell and they're whatever and they're like banging on the window and they're like barking hooting and hollering and was, they're like Whoop! yeah they're like Whoop! they're actually barking they're like banging on the on the freaking glass so they they gave me uh, a tan suit to dress into i had to dress into this tan suit did you get the mug shot i do have a mug shot i actually don't know where it's at though it's not it's oh. not anywhere you can't really find it uh, like literally everything got dropped. It, it's like as if it didn't happen and they just they wanted to scare me I was 18 mm -hmm. at the time um, Yeah, so college. Yeah. 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 The college was fun. College you ever been in a fight? Time. Yes, yes, I have been in a fight. That was actually what started off the whole going to jail process. Oh Oh <laughs> it, it never happened, but then like they broke it up before anything happened. I was in a fight before that but they broke it up before anything happened. But then they, that's when they asked to see our license. At the, it was outside of a bar. They asked to see our IDs. I was 18. And so I was like, I was honest with them. I said, I'm not supposed to be here. I don't have a real license to give you. Or like, I have a fake ID. So they didn't care. You know, see, that's, that was the problem. You lied or you told the truth to a law enforcement. Well, here's the lesson to take home, uh, folks. Lie to the police. Uh, otherwise, you're going to jail. <laughs> yeah! After that, I was like, okay, I guess I should have just lied to you guys. Because <laughs> I was a respectful, I used my manners, I was, I was honest with them. You know, they asked me, any, any question they asked me, I was completely honest. And they just did not care. They did not care. And they were on. And, but you know what, Los? Here's the worst part. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for it. The cops, it was two dudes, two dude cops. I went to a small town college, my first college I went to, freshman year, small town college, okay? These two cops, they sit outside of this bar, the same bar. There's like one bar in the whole freaking town. They were in there partying a week prior to my arrest. The same two dudes, they were off, off the clock in the bar partying at the pool table, hitting on me and my friend, and when we denied them, they got upset. And it was the same cop that arrested me that was hitting on me the week prior inside at the pool table. Connection, folks? What do you think? I don't know. This 18-year-old this didn't let me hit on her. I just throw a book at her. Same. Yes. It's like they were like looking to see if I was underage, too. I don't know. It was weird. It was a whole weird. And uh, actually, another girl got arrested with me, my friend in college. Same thing happened to her, and she remembers them too. So, like, I have a val, I have a witness, but she's just not here right now. Were you putting the but cell her, together? Her name's Carson. Yeah, but we ended up getting split up. But yeah, for a while we were in the we 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 were taken we were taken together in the cop car. So it was like kind of fun because I had my friend. 
<laughs> and she was a party animal too, so it was not that bad because she was with me. <laughs> no, girls trip. Let's go. <laughs> it was a girls trip. Oh, that sounds horrible. That really does sound horrible. Oh my god. But I feel like everybody has like a crazy story uh in their younger days, and that's my crazy younger day story. After that, I was like, okay. F this, I don't ever want to, like, even though it was kind of funny, I was like, this was really dumb, and I don't want to go to jail ever again, what a waste of time. I actually did not party for a long time after that. I took, like, six months off my my freshman year of partying before we went That's right prime back into time. it. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I, uh, I was pretty crazy in college, but I definitely settled down a lot. I, I mean... My friend who I cheered with for many, 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 many years says that I've settled down a lot and um, says that I've changed. Not in a bad way. I've just become, I think that honestly, I think that gaming and streaming has brought out like an introverted side to me that I did not know existed because I grew up uh, doing all extroverted activities, cheering and constantly going to parties and like my, my coach was my stepmom and like, so we were always out doing things. I was never even like given the ability to sit down at a computer or at a game and just like be with myself for a minute and just be inside. Like we were all my, my stepmom growing up. She's not my stepmom anymore, but growing up she was. And we were always doing something like always on the go. We were, there was never a boring day. Like we, like she went down to even just like taking us to do painting pottery. Cause like, she just did not want to sit in the house. She hated that. So I think that like, honestly, the COVID, and streaming really brought out my introverted side because now I get kind of tired of going out and then I get uh, where I just want to like sit in my stream room and be here and not, not be out talking to people in the world. And so, yeah, that's that. What was your party friend group's, I suppose, reaction to this transition into much more of a, I wouldn't say calmer, but a less of a wild zebra. Yes. Well, so there was actually a time frame in between call my my crazy college party days and and streamer zebra. There um, was about two years in between those. Um, after I transferred to a new college, I was more in the city of Atlanta, and I did bottle service. So we upgraded from college bars. We went to a very nice lounge. Um, and I did bottle service at a nice lounge for about two years when I was 21 and 22. And that's really where it hit me that that is not my scene. Like, it was fun for a minute. But honestly, I grew to hate the bar scene. That's That's really where my hate for going out was created i think because there was just a lot of shady people in that industry like i said it was a very nice lounge like a very high-end lounge we'd have regulars that would come in you know spend a lot of money and i just saw so many things that kind of grossed me out in a in a sense and just shady people 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 really only cared about the money and at the end of the day, even though i like to party and have a good time i i care very deeply about people's feelings and i'm a very i I know this might not sound humbling, but if I had to describe myself, I feel like I'm a pretty down to earth person and I, I, think I care about people a lot and that's just not the group of people in this bottle service scene. They're not that way at all. They just care about money, money and money. And that's it. To me, there's a lot more to life than money. So, uh, to those girls, like while it was fun and I loved them a lot, I was known as the nerdy one, the, the, the gamer girl, the nerdy one, you know, after we would get off at 2 AM they would all go out do cocaine and keep partying and i wanted to go home pick up waffle house go home and watch rick and morty and get on my games and they thought that was really weird they were like what you don't want to come do coke and go party and i was like no i don't at all actually like that does not sound fun like i've made my money i want to go home and uh so they thought that was weird so i think i got more hate from hate in quotations it was just like they never really understood why, why don't, why don't you want to come party with us until 6 a.m.? You know, like this bar is open, this lounge is open. Let's go to the strip club. And like, I just wanted to go home. Like I just, I wanted to make my money and, and leave and go home. So I think I got more judgment from them not going out after work, after hours, after 2 a.m. And um, my cheer team, 
prior to that, kind of the same thing. They didn't really understand what I was doing. Like, no one really understands streaming on the outside world. So they were just kind of like, what? Like, you dropped your cheer scholarship to do something called Twitch. What? And, uh, yeah. That's... That's pretty much it. Sorry, I'm rambling. Sorry if I'm rambling. That's that's what you're here for. That's what okay. we, we brought you on. It's for these rambles. So you had such an extroverted lifestyle and even moved on to being a, you know, an authority figure when it comes to cheering. But how did you use or how did, if at all, that extroverted life benefit your bottle service career? What, what was it like being in that situation? Um, okay, wait, hold this question. I, to add on kind of to what I was saying before that, going into this, I'm not one to ever care about what people think. I think that the hardest part was because I was a cheer coach to kids, uh, like children and high schoolers who followed me on social media. I think that uh, I didn't really care what people thought about me. I didn't care about my cheer team judging me. I didn't care about bottle service people judging me. The one thing I cared about was... It was definitely kind of weird for my kids who I coached to see me acting as like an e-girl now and like going on like kind of a whole new route. So that's probably where like the weirdest part came into it was I was more concerned about the the kids that I coached, to be honest. And like I, I coached the high schoolers, so they definitely followed me on social media. And so I think that was I was more concerned about that. But. So how well, did before extra- we get to that, now I want to know, but doesn't that also open up an avenue for them that they previously never thought possible? Yeah, but it's kind of like, okay, do you remember being a kid and like if you saw your teacher out in, in the grocery store or something, it was like weird? It was you like, hey, you're supposed to, to be back in school. What are you doing out here? Yeah, yeah. Like it's like the same thing. Like if like when you when you had a teacher, if you saw your teacher outside of the classroom, it was like weird. It was like, what? Like you forget that they're real people. So I think that in a sense, it was kind of the same thing because I was always coaching in the cheer gym. So to see me going, like I was super, I was at 21 years old, very professional, uh, very like, I was like running, I was a a director uh, at the the cheer gym that I worked at and just like, I don't know, like was just always in there, very passionate about cheerleading, professional, running media. I was 21 years old having meetings with their parents who are 40 and 50 years old. And like, I think that going from that lifestyle to posting cringy TikToks as an e-girl is a big switch up. So it's kind of like seeing your teacher go, go to have a completely different like persona. That's the most thing that I was like, I think that was weird. I don't know. Does that make, am I making sense like that? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it was just uh, like, imagine your teacher, you like suddenly start seeing her online doing oo oo TikToks. Like, it's just, like, weird. I don't know. You're a role model so, to them, so you wanted to... I hope so. I do hope so. Did um, you want to preserve that idea of being, like, the the professional coach and not let that, that second or this new lifestyle bleed into that? Yeah. Yeah, in a sense. Um, I would say... I've all like you know this. I've always separated Sarah from Zebra. Sarah's my real name, if anyone didn't know. And so like Zebra is a brand to me. And so I'm gonna follow like what that would have taken. And at the time I was sponsored by a TikTok group called E Girls. So like the more E yeah, so so I had to do legit e-girl tiktoks like i have a i haven't worn them in a year but i've got a whole rack of like skirts in my closet of just like that just scream ooh ooh and like i don't know i i don't know it's just it's really funny but why'd you um, leave those behind why why don't you break them out i'm about to be 25 and (laughs) i don't know like like, i like it's no hate for anybody you know you could be 40 years old and if that's how you still want to live but i did not grow up that way so that's at the end of the day that's not really who i am um so like i don't know i'm about to be 25 and you know want to start looking at settling down eventually and you know i want my my kid my future children i don't have kids now but my future children uh to like look up to me and be and be a good role model and i don't want to be an e-girl role model necessarily Mm -hmm. That, yeah. I know that there's no hate for that. That's just not me. Like, if someone else wants to do that, that's fine. No judgment. 
me personally, I just, I felt like it was like a childish, like a little child play. Um, and I just feel like I've gotten to be a little bit older and more mature and kind of out, out, outgrown that era of my life. Um, and just kind of more, I, I, I think I've started combining Zebra and Sarah a lot more in the last year. Like, I think I've really just become more myself, more Sarah. My brand's more Sarah than, and less like fake, this fake person. Does that are make you, sense? Are you worried at all that there might be a point where there's no distinction between the two? Uh, I'm not worried. No, no, like it's not, it's not a worry for me. Like, you know, you learn as you go. It's been about three years since I've been streaming. And so you, you learn what you like, you learn what you don't like, you learn how you want your brand to be. And um, I don't know, everything you see behind me, like this is a lot of me right now going on in my life. And we got Juggernaut, we've got That's a, that's a nice looking, looking banner there. Oh yeah, the poster. <laughs> yeah, so I totally took it. That, that poster has been sitting in the Juggernaut content studio for, uh, since we started, since March. Since March, that thing has been there, and it's always been something Z has wanted to have. We never put it up. It's never been in the background for content we've shot, so. <laughs> I saw it sitting on the side, so I was like, I'm going to just take this. And then I asked Topher, I was like, do you think that it would be okay if I took this from the office? And he was like, honestly, yeah, just take it. <laughs> I love Suicide Squad. It's one of my favorite movies, and I love Margot Robbie, and that's like where my, my love for Harley Quinn really came in. And um, I just think it's a really fun movie. So, yeah. And then um, the painting back there, I actually had, like, it's behind the plant. You can't really see it. But there's a zebra painting. Um, I had oh, a I member see. of the... Com yeah, I had a member of the community paint me that. So that was really cool. Um, I've got a couple of squishies over there. You can't really see them. And a lot of stuff on the shelf that Apex sent me. Because Apex is my life. And um, my, my, my cat is asleep right there. I don't know if you can see him. But this is just me. Like now, now it's just like this is who I am. This is me. I feel I feel the most with myself and my brand than I ever have. I mean, that's amazing to hear. And you know, talking about growth, I want to hone in specifically on one moment of major growth for you. Uh, what was it like when you went to ALGS in Raleigh, your first LAN? Cool experience because that was the first time that it truly clicked of how big esports is for me. And while Apex isn't the biggest esports out there, I know that, like there's much bigger esports. For me, that's been my favorite game to play. And so to see it right there on a big screen was the coolest thing. I met a lot of the devs. Uh, shout out to Lenovo because I got to go to their lounge and meet a, a bunch of people from there. Um, and yeah, like it was just, really really cool because uh i love like i love an atmosphere of sports in general like i love going to football games uh football's probably my my college football is probably my favorite sport to watch um but like you can t you can put me in any sports scene and i just love that atmosphere i love people just being super passionate about, about a team and like you know there's like you know banter between the rivals and I, uh, alcohol at some places, you know, you drink, you, you eat wings, you watch football, you have a good time. And so to see that come to life with esports is when it really, like, my passion was driven. I'll never forget it. My passion for streaming and everything was just driven because I was like, wow, like, this is, I, I feel like I'm at a football game right now, in a sense. In a sense, it's not actually a football game, but the whole atmosphere was amazing. It was like, it was very similar. And I was like, this is what I fell in love with. And this is a side of esports that um, people don't see. People, people, of my, people who judged me um, on my cheer team, they would never even know that this existed. So it's like I started, I wanted people to know how amazing esports could be. And like my passion was just driven from Raleigh. So yeah. Let's fast forward uh, quite some time over to London the most recent land that you went to, what what was that like? We, you know, we talked about it just a little bit, but that sounds like such a, a crazy experience to fly across the Atlantic for fucking esports yes. e specifically. Yes, it was. It was really cool. That was actually my first time leaving the country. Woo! Um, 
Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. London was amazing. The people there are amazing. And um, yeah, it just was just it continues to grow each year, which is really, really cool to see. You know, I got a media pass. I, I've started vlogging. Um, I just continue. Like, vlog just, Zoom? I, yeah, I, I'm almost done with it, actually. Um, I probably have I'm probably like 80 percent finished. So, um yeah, I've, I, that's a new hobby I've picked up on here in the past couple months is vlogging. So I really, really enjoy that because um, I do travel a lot. I love to travel. And honestly, my favorite part about this job is the freedom to be able to be able to travel and make content from basically anywhere on the globe. And so I invested it in a vlog camera and... um. Yeah, dude, like going from Raleigh to now London was a huge jump and and it's just super cool. They actually have champs coming up in September. It's in Bur Birmingham, UK. Um Okay, okay, the good the good one. I mean, I, I is there really a good a good Birmingham of the two? There's Alabama Birmingham. and then in the UK. <laughs> yeah, like like we say Birmingham, but apparently Birmingham. that was, you know, that's not right. Um but it, overall, I think it it's just here. really cool. My my favorite part is my favorite part to be honest with you because anyone who watches me knows that I'm not super into comp like I don't keep up with it as much as I probably should as an Apex streamer but for me I've all like my brand is fun content and my favorite part of going to these events is like just having all of these creators in one place I got to see all of my creator friends at the event and at the after party and all these places um, that I hang out with online, like these, you make these friends online, they really become like your true friends and you've never even met them before. So having them all in the same place is honestly like the coolest, the coolest thing about it, in my opinion. Well, that's what it was like with uh, me and Enzo, you know, we'd been friends for probably two mm -hmm. years, never met each other. Then I went out to LA while he was living out there for a little bit and, uh, yeah, actually, it's crazy. Actually went to a club on a, on a specifically gay night. We didn't know that. And then went to an <laughs> after party from that club. Uh, who would have thought it was also a gay after party? We didn't put two and two together. A, a bit foolish on our part. Kind of funny. And it was just the two of you that went? <laughs> yeah, it was just the two of us. <laughs> that was actually really funny. Um... Wow. Yeah. So that how long ago was that that you guys met? That was that was probably in 2021, I think. Oh wow. 2021 really cool. when we first met, and now, shit, we're out here in Houston, making right. it happen. And you're out in Austin, so that's kind of a big jump coming out from Georgia. Maybe maybe not as big as some, but it's a big jump moving from Georgia out to Austin. What was uh, the the real reason, the real inspiration for you to move out west? So I graduated college in 2021 after five years and I knew that Atlanta, there was nothing really there for me except for my family. And I love my family very much, but in the sake of like, you know, my career, there was really nothing. While some would say that Twitch, you know, yes, yes, you can do it remote. There's a reason why actors and actresses go to Hollywood to become a bigger actor and be become a bigger actress. And in my in my um, ex experience, uh, just talking to people um, after I graduated, you know, they kept telling me like the two places where most Twitch streamers live are either L.A. or Austin, Texas, or Texas mostly, but but mostly Austin. I was told Austin, Texas. Um. So it's kind of like you get to a point where I knew that I wasn't, I, I graduated college with my marketing degree and public, public relations degree. Um, but I knew that I wanted to take Twitch more seriously. So I was like, okay, I need to, I was, I talked to a bunch of people, a lot of my streamer friends and they were like, you know, these are the two places. So I hate LA. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not an LA girl. I think everyone there is like just shady and snobby and like over. I think it's just an overrated city. It also smells like pee everywhere. Pee um, aside, how did you find that opinion? How did you form that opinion? Because yes, it's it's piss. But yeah. what about the rest went, of it? Oh, oh, uh, 
I did go uh, visit LA once and my appendix ruptured while I was there. So it was like just bad energy from the beginning. Um, so <laughs> I, my I, body's I failing there, and it's all your fault. Yeah, it's, and this is because of LA. No, um, I do remember walking around and it just smelled like pee everywhere. And um, I got a lot of similar vibes. It like almost threw me in PTSD from bottle service days. So, like, a lot, like, people who are just there for, like, the fame and the clout more so. And not to, like, actually make genuine connections with people. It just seemed like L.A. was filled with more of, like, who do you know? Like, you can only come to this party if you know this person. You can mm -hmm. only come to this, like, like, you know what I mean? And, like, I want to get to know people. I want to get to know, I either like you as a person or I don't. Like, I don't care about your clout or anything like that. So, um, I visited, so then after that, I visited Austin. And I just had the best time. There was actually a bunch of Apex streamers that live out here. So we did a big meetup and we went to Zilker Park and we like uh, played football there. Um, just like, like all of these Apex streamers who I've been friends with and following for all these years were just like in front of me. And we were there having such a good time and we made content together. And so I was like, wow, like this is what it means to collab with other streamers because I never really did that in Atlanta. Um, so I'm a very IRL person. I hate doing online relationships, online friendships. Like I have to get to know you at some point in real life. Um, and it was like in that moment when I was visiting, just like how cool it was to network with so many streamers. And like in the same week that I was visiting, we went to this creator party and I met creators outside of Apex, like people who do all the diff all different categories of Twitch were just at this one party. And I can truly say since living here uh, that they always do, like there's always some type of creator party going on. So I feel like I've just like was driven to move to a point, like we don't do that in Atlanta. Like there people in Atlanta didn't understand what I, what I do. Like people of Atlanta, when I would say I'm a Twitch streamer, they're like, what? You do what? You play video games? What? And in Austin, it's almost like everyone here knows what Twitch is. They're, they're, they're pretty aware of that it's 2023 and that the Twitch is a thing. And uh, whether they're streamers or not streamers, like um, if I just go out to a restaurant in Austin and I tell my waiter that I'm a Twitch streamer, he's like, oh, that's awesome. And it's not, it's not, oh, you do what? Like he knows what it is and I'm not getting judged for it. So I felt way more welcomed with my career in Austin and I felt more network and more opportunity here. Um, and so, yeah, um, my uh, roommate, her name is Jade. She knows nothing about Twitch. She's actually a nurse. Hit me up randomly, and this is how I know it was meant to be because she just like randomly hit me up and was like, hey, um, I'm looking into moving to Austin. Would you be interested? And out of all the places that she wanted to move, she, she wanted to go to Austin and she has a nursing job here in Austin. So everything just like kind of fell into place and has just really worked out. And I'm very, very happy. I've made amazing friends and um, I have a boyfriend now. And like, I'm just very happy. Yeah, I'm just like very happy. Um, like when I first got here though, I will admit that it was a very hard adjustment. I missed like for the first probably six months, I was just really sad all the time. I missed my friends and my family. This was my first time leaving a state that I lived in my entire life. Um, so I was just really sad overall. And um, I was just like always missing my family. And I was like, reg almost had regrets for a minute. I was like, you know, is this, did I make the right decision? You, you definitely think, of, you definitely like think a lot when you make a big, like when you go outside of your comfort zone, um, but I'm a big believer in taking risks. And I think that you won't grow as a person if you never take a risk in your life. And so once I, once I got over that like hill, when I first moved here of just being sad, um, yeah, it just got better and, um, everything has been really, really, really great these past few months. So. I'm happy about that. And yeah, no, you have to take a risk. If you don't do that, you're not going to grow because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure what philosopher said it, but if you want to change the world, first, you must change yourself. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's inspirational. Inspirational. That's very true. 
that that is so true like if you just kind of like stick in your comfort zone and stay where you're at your whole life are you really exploring your options in life and are you really going to be happy i don't know some some might argue some some might um but i just really really believe that you have to take risks and moving away from my family who i'm very close with was a huge risk that i took and i'm happy that i didn't know I'm very happy that, that I did it. And now, I, you know, I, I'm a big believer that if I would have never moved out here, I would have never met you or Enzo or Lori or anybody, you know, that I know now. I, I, I just don't think that that would have happened. So I'm, I'm very grateful to be where I'm at today, to be honest with you. Big, big shout out to personal growth. <laughs> Let's go. Let's shout go, Zebra. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> also, Nero, sorry, she was looking at the wrong side of the the camera. We had we had to swap it. Uh, it's, it's not gonna. Sorry, sorry, brother. <laughs> I don't want me. <laughs> no. So when here in the studio, the way that we have your camera is, uh, it kind of is a flip, oh, but okay. your background is also flipped. But in uh... that sense, uh, I swapped it so you were right in the right way. But then you were looking away from me, and I'm like, ah. Uh, no, can't, can't, can't please everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, so is it back to how you had it? <laughs> it's back to normal, yeah. Well, I mean, normal in quotes, I would say. <laughs> I can just look at the camera in general. Also, can we take note of how my cat is laying right now? Oh, my God. That <laughs> is adorable. <laughs> His foot is, like, hanging off the couch. He's hysterical. He's knocked out. Okay. He sleeps all day and then cries at night. Go ahead. We're getting a fan request from the, uh, the Losers audience. Who, who is... Ashley? Who is Ashley? What is what is the Ashley story? Oh my god, I'm not getting into this right now. I'm not. It's a full it's a long story that I'm not getting into. But I guess I'll try to sum it up. Who asked this question? Anyways. Let's let's get the DLDR real quick. <laughs> okay, so I am a big believer in signs from the universe. If something's meant to be you will get the signs that that's what you need to do. We won't go into detail about that, but just know that I do believe in that. And there was a day... Well, I mean, how do I, I, sum, I agree, but how keep do I going. Sum this, yes, how do I sum this story up without it being too long? So, whatever, I'm just going to tell it. So, there was a random day where I was living in a house in Atlanta. I was thinking about moving to Austin, but I was super stressed. Like, just know that the... The thought of moving to another state stressed me out in a way that I've never been stressed before. And so I, I was just like really kind of depressed. I never really left my house and that's not like me. I like to, I like to go do things. Um, and so like there was this one day I was just feeling really, really down and just super overwhelmed with the thought of like if moving to Austin was the right decision for me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for a walk at the park because for me, therapy is nature. Nature is therapy. So if I'm ever feeling down or weird or off, I just go outside. I try to go, you know, like lay out or just simply surround myself by nature because it is truly, that's when I feel my best. So I was really trying, I was really struggling with this decision of moving to Austin. And um, I went to this park by my house and I sat down, like I, I did a couple of laps. It was a pretty small park. And I sat down on this bench where it literally just stared at a tree in, in the, like the woods. And, but you could, you could see the people going around in laps. And I was there for probably like 30 minutes. And I saw, it was like in the, it was like in the middle of the day on a weekday. So people were busy. It wasn't like the park was, was busy. And I saw like the same three people doing the track, doing the laps. They went around multiple times. Well, all of a sudden, I'm just sitting there like staring at this tree and I'm just like in my head, in my thoughts. I'm like, okay, should I move to Austin? Is this the right decision for me? Um, kind of a thing, like just kind of talking out loud. I was like, dude, like, am I supposed like, am I making the right decision by moving to Austin? And I shit you not, Los, out of nowhere, this lady approaches me, comes up from behind. And I can like feel her like walking up. So like I turn around before she gets to me. And this lady is beautiful. I, she was kind of sweating a little bit, like as if she had been doing the track, but I was sitting there for a long time. I did not see her go by once. This was my first time seeing her walk up. She walks up to me like beautiful, like 
big glowing eyes, beautiful smile, perfectly straight teeth. Her skin was literally glowing. I don't know if that was from the sweat or not, but she was glowing. Like, I'm not even joking. And she walks up to me. She was like, hey, I really like your shorts. Where'd you get them? I was just wearing like regular running shorts, like nothing crazy. And I was like, oh, like, thank you. And one thing about me is I, I like overly nice people. It makes me feel good. I have a conversation with them. All, like, I just like really, really nice people. So she came up to me out of nowhere while I was sitting there staring at this tree. I was like, I really like your shorts. Where'd you get them? I was like, oh, hi, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, I think. And she was like, oh, like, that's awesome. She's like, well, what are you doing here? Like, who goes up to someone at a park and asks what you're doing at the park? I don't know. We're kind of weird, but I was like, um, I was like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just sitting here, you know, trying to get my mind off some things, trying to ease my mind, meditate a little bit, do my own form of meditation. Um, she's like, oh yeah, I feel that. She's like, I work from home and anytime I feel overwhelmed or like just stuck in the house, I like to come to this park and walk. She's like, so I know how you're feeling. And I'm like, yeah, like, right. Kind of like, I, I'm happy she's talking to me, but I'm like, it was really random that she came up to me and she's like, well, like she asked me, like, we just start talking like normal conversation. And I like, it somehow leads into that. I'm a Twitch streamer and how I'm thinking about moving to Austin. Like she kind of led me in the direction of getting out that I was thinking about moving to Austin for Twitch streaming and to grow as a content creator. And she was like, well, I just want to let you know something. You should definitely move to Austin. I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for you there. And I just have like a really good feeling about it for you. And um, I just, I think you should do it. Like she was just really encouraging me to make that decision to move to Austin. And I was like, thank you. That, like I needed to hear that. Like, thank you. And she was like, you're going to do great. I, like, she was just hyping me up. She's like, you're going to go out there. You're going to do great. You're going to become this awesome content creator like you want to be. And like, I really just think that you need to do it. And I was like, thank you. And she was like, of course. And she was like, well, you know, my name's Ashley. What's your name? And she said that two times. She let me know her name was Ashley twice. I told her my name was Sarah, and she was like, um, well, she was like, Sarah, it was so nice to meet you. Again, my name is Ashley, and just I'm really excited for your future, and I hope everything works out for you. And she takes off running, and I shit you not. She runs around the corner of this tree, and she just disappears. You can call me crazy all you want. I will never in my life, I will never in my life forget this day I've never experienced anything like this in my entire life living on this earth. I've never experienced anything like this. So I get home, I call uh, this lady I, I, I see all the time who's a mindset coach and she's very spiritual and I called her, her name's Amy. And I was like, Amy, I gotta tell you about this interaction I just had at the park, it was kind of weird. And she was like, look up what, an, what Ashley means. I was like, what do you mean look up what Ashley means? She's like, there was a reason why she told you her name was Ashley. And if you look up Ashley, I can't really remember it exactly off the top of my head, but you can Google it later if you want. It, and it has something to do with an oak tree and like, um, like just your future in general, like the, the significance of an oak tree and like new beginnings or something like that. And that's what like how Ashley ties in. And the tree that I was looking at was a freaking oak tree. So it was like the weirdest story. And I told that story to my chat and half of them thought I was just freaking nuts and psychotic. Um, and then uh, the other half like like supported that this story, and uh, it was just such a weird, it was just such a weird interaction I had, and I I don't really get embarrassed to share it because yeah I might sound crazy, but it led me here, and that honestly like the relief that I felt after talking to this random glowing lady was insane, and a lot of people do say that that's an angel, and she could have been there in the form of an angel, and I I truly. The way that it was just so weird and like the timing and the significance of an Ashley and like the oak tree is just weird. And I swear by it. I You can think I'm crazy all you want, but that's the story. I know it's kind of long, but yes, that's the story of the Ashley oak tree that kind of led me to be right here right now. <laughs> I think there's absolutely nothing crazy about that story. That actually sounds amazing. Thank Thank you. Uh, thank you. That means a lot because I feel crazy. I feel nuts. And there's like a little bonus story. If you want to hear it, I can tell you if not. Run you, you it wanna... up. You want me to? Absolutely.
All right, so bonus story added on to it. I was leaving. I, I sat there for a minute because she quite literally disappeared. And I sat there and I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, what was that? Like, it was just, I don't know. Like, you don't see someone sitting, in my opinion, you don't see somebody sitting on the bench at a park and just randomly walk up to them and just give them all these nice, kind words. Like, people go to the park to run, to, you know, walk it out, to get their minds off things, to, may to maybe eat lunch, but they're all there in their own world, doing their own thing. Like, it's not very often that you just go out of your way to interact with somebody at the park. Am I not? I don't know. Maybe someone thinks different, but... So I sat there for like an extra 20 minutes and I was like, something about that interaction just made, like it relieved me. I felt less stress. I felt this like weight lifted off my chest. I felt really good. And I just sat there thinking about it for about 20 minutes. And then, so I'm leaving the park and I, I FaceTime my best friend, Shayna, who's also very spiritual. And I knew that she was gonna just love to hear the story. So I FaceTime her, I'm walking out of the park now. This one, I'm not saying that these girls were like angels sent. I think that this was just kind of co maybe maybe coincidence. Take it how you want it. All right, you ready for this? I'm we're leaving. I'm, I'm leaving the park. There's these two girls who come up. They're like your basic like, you know, they go to church. They're, rep they're representing their church. They're handing out like the cards and all that. Jesus lovers, you know. They come up to me randomly and they're like, Hey, do you have a second to talk while I'm on FaceTime with my best friend sharing the story? And I'm like, eh, I really didn't want to talk to them, but I was like, you know, I can't say no. And they were like, well, you know, we're with the blah, blah, blah church. I don't, I don't even remember exactly which church they were from, but they were like, you know, we're just out here because we just, you know, we're trying to encourage people for whatever reason. But they said, we got to ask you one question, if you don't mind, taking about five minutes out of your day to just answer one question. And I was like, okay. They were like, if you could ask God one thing, what would you, in this moment, what would you ask him? And I said, well, if I'm making the right decision in the future. And then I explained to them, I want to move to Austin, whatever. There was these two girls. I explained to them how I wanted to move to Austin and I wasn't really sure if it was the right decision and I wanted to make sure I was going down the right track and like the right path for me with my life. And so this one girl gave me like really nice words back of like how like, you know, I should always follow my heart, whatever, whatever. And the girl next to her randomly stops her. By the, I'm wearing regular shorts. She randomly stops her in the middle of this like encouragement speech of Jesus and was like, hey, by the way, I really like your shorts. Where'd you get them? There was two people in one day that asked me where my shorts are from. They're, they were regular black running shorts. Nothing crazy, nothing weird. They were just like Dick's Sporting Goods running shorts that I was wearing that I just threw on. So it was almost like a confirmation almost because the first lady that came up to me, Ashley, the, re the reason why she approached me in the first place was she came up to me and said, hey, I really like your shorts. I want to know where you got them. And then these two girls while I was leaving randomly asked me where I got my shorts from. So like, take that how you will. I just see that as like a bonus added onto the story. That's not the main, the main point, but um, I think that they actually were there for their church. But I, I don't know, like things like that, they just really kind of get your mind going and thinking of like, how weird life is and how there's just so many things outside of this life that lead you to be where you're at so yeah that's the bonus that's the bonus round of the story basically i mean crazy coincidence for that not to be that connected one was a coincidence. yeah i don't yeah. i don't know i don't know might might be something might be something there but it led you here in austin it led you to a a huge change a positive one in your life and it also led you to late night with los and now it's gonna lead you to what we call the losers cheer squad zebra so i thank you so much for sharing your story but now i'm gonna need you to share your expertise so i need some more pep for the losers when i'm trying to slay out on val when i'm trying to really get exciting become more of a uh entertainer on this Where are you going app with this? so i need some help <laughs> your help to come up okay. with a few cheers for a, a few specific instances that can really bring up the energy. Okay? Okay, okay. This, like right now off the top of my like head? Like right now off the top, and I'm going to do them with you. Okay. So first and foremost, we gotta teach you a cheer clap. It's very important. Let's do it. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I think gotta... I taught you this in the office, but I'll see if you remember. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. You kind of look weird, like going into it. The approach is a little off. I want oh, that that's, one. That there, was good. There we go. That, that had more confidence. Yeah. Uh -huh. So a cheer clap is actually very important. You get you actually get points off if your cheer clap, like in the competitive world. Hold on, I gotta... If your cheer clap is not accurate, so when you cheer clap from the side oh, angle. Bad. Your elbows have to be in line, uh, and your elbows have to be together as well. So this is what an accurate cheer clap looks like. Um, I'm trying to think of a, of a cheer to do. So, no, I, I, I mean, have promise for you to get you started, okay? Oh, so let's wonderful. just say we ordered some Zaxby's, and the, the delivery guy is coming on down. What are we saying? Zaxby's! I'm just gonna hype him up like that. I love Zaxby's. Um, Zaxby's! And then I'm gonna be like, like I'm a woo girl for sure. So I'm like, woo! Like, woo! Oh, woo! Okay. <laughs> Let's go, Zaxby's! Let's go, Zaxby's! I'm doing the cheer clap too. Well, 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 this one, so in the competitive world versus the spirit world, like spirit cheerleading, you mm -hmm. can do more like, um, God, there's a lot that goes into both, but um, I'd probably do like a wave. You know, if we're looking at a crowd, I, like, I, like I, a, I opened like up nice... my shirt a little too more than I wanted to. Oh, I'm realizing oh. now. <laughs> do like a nice wave to the crowd, wave to the driver that's pulling up with your Zaxby's and be like, let's go, Zaxby's! Let's go, Zaxby's! <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Now, for you, I, you know, you can do an L. This is an L motion. Yeah. And then an O would be grabbing your wrist. All right. And then an S would be hand on the forehead like backwards and then across your stomach is an s oh so you'd oh, be like oh, i got that instantly so you'd be like all right give me an l give me an l give me an o give me an o give me an s give me an s let's go Lose. let's go let's Lose. go yeah let's yeah go <laughs> <laughs> fantastic so, yeah. yeah now you know the motions so you can do l o s and then and then you can you can make it faster and you can go you can go L O S L O wait it would be L O S L O S, L -O -S. <laughs> and then get everyone hyped up L O S yeah Oh shit okay <laughs> another another scenario we're just getting bottle service. Now this could be on oh, we're giving the God. bottle service or we're getting the bottle service. What okay, do I Okay okay Hold on wait, check check this, walk, check this walk check this walk check this walk Okay <laughs> well, how was that how was that <laughs> you kind of look like a crab <laughs> running up on a beach <laughs> can you can you pause for one second yeah and i'll show you okay all right, bet. all right let's let's see this we'll do the chat channel of the watch party let's go come on even even the cat is wondering what Ready? the hell's going on i'm excited to show you this all one. right yeah let's do it i gotta put my headphones back in though so i can hear you wait Okay, are you ready? Yes. So you don't walk up that fast. The way that you just walked up so fast was just too much, okay? Oh, okay. So I've got my bottle here of vodka, and I have a random... We're going to pretend like this is a sign that maybe says happy birthday or something for bottle service. Okay? I might yeah. not have room, but all right, I'm going to take my headphones out and show you, okay? Okay, I just keep, keep walking me through it. Keep walking me through okay. it. Okay, so you would have your bottles like this, and you'd walk up kind of, I'm trying to like crouch into the, to the camera, and you'd go like this. <laughs> like a nice, like a nice little bounce. And then you could maybe like, let's say you got some sparklers, and then you can like kind of like bounce with the music to the sparklers and like show the, show the bottle. Let's go. Happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that's how you just kind of like you don't like the way that you did it. You did it like a crab run. You were like, okay, all right, that, and it was just too much. Like saying? that was just too much. Like you want to be there's you're in a club, so there's gonna be okay. music playing. So you want to like go with the music and like woo, maybe you can like be fast about it. You can go slow, you know. So yeah. <laughs> well, in insightful. Huh? Okay, now I can hear you. What? Insightful. I woke Mochi up from his nap. Oh, sorry, Mochi. It looked like Mochi uh, got up and thought, what the fuck is this girl doing? 
Yeah, oh, that's just how he is. Um, every day he wakes up and he's like, why did this lady choose me out of the my brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, because I, 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 look how, he's always pissed off. Okay, wait, I gotta show you. Oh, let's fucking go. Let's do the Zoidberg. Come on. <laughs> oh my god, he looks so annoyed. <laughs> He's just not really happy to be here. But it's okay. <laughs> okay, wait. I gotta get some uh, wireless headphones. It's 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 about time. I need to get them too. I've I'm trapped. I'm trapped and held by wire. It's <laughs> it's tough being chained to my desk. But we've got one more chance one more cheer and kind of almost was done already but we're closing out the late night with los show how do we thank the fans for joining losers productions here in the studio right here in downtown houston texas how do we thank them how do we thank them with a wonderful cheer we throw out merch <laughs> in a sh in a in a <laughs> in a cannon you throw out merch. I'm thinking at a football game. That's what we would do. Okay. And and then you give them coupons. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> one more question while we get this going. Zebra, thank you so much for joining us here on Late Night with Lowe's. Where can the folks at home find you? Uh, Twitch.tv slash just zebra. And then Twitter is, yeah, Zebra Twitch. And then, um, yeah, YouTube is like Zebra YT. Pretty much just type in Zebra. It should show up somewhere. Everybody, you know I mean? make sure you're typing in Zebra. I want to thank everyone for coming here in the Late Night with Lowe's Productions. That's going to be it here for the show. We'll catch uh -oh. up. Oh, no, what happened to my camera? I don't know. Did it just die? It was getting <laughs> exciting. I hope not, because it was getting super exciting. Oh, God, it died. No! What's up, guys? My name's Zebra. I'm now taking over Late Night with Los. <laughs> is he still here? Can you he still hear me? What has happened? <laughs> so, yeah, they, they were... That's a sign from Ashley, actually. <laughs> uh, too many abs. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm the captain now. Um, oh, my God. I really am in the seat. Hey! <laughs> What's up, everybody? Um, late night with Los here, and we have special guest Los. My turn. All right, all right, I'm back. Here's here's my merch. Ah, thank you for joining Whoa. late night with Los. We'll catch you next week, same time, same place. Thank you for joining us in the studio, Zebra. We love you, and I love all the people at home. Thank you for joining late night with Los, and we'll see you next week. Let's go.